I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now for a moment of silence and meditation. In 1920s Baltimore, a black high school student was punished for playing a prank on his classmates by having to read the U.S. Constitution. The punishment would inspire him to go on and become the leading civil rights lawyer of his time. That young man was Thurgood Marshall. He grew up under Jim Crow, a set of rules, laws, and customs that enforced racial segregation in the United States. After college, Marshall applied to the University of Maryland School of Law but was denied a place simply because of his race. He attended the historically black Howard University Law School instead and graduated top of his class. As an attorney, his first big win was in the case Murray versus Pearson in 1936, when student Donald Gaines Murray was denied admission to the University of Maryland because he was black. Marshall argued that the school had violated the 14th Amendment, which guarantees Americans equal protection under the law. The judge ruled that Murray could attend, but should be separated from his fellow white students. It was a victory that resonated with Marshall. He had been denied admission to the same university five years before. Marshall was convinced that the only way for African Americans to succeed was by improving their access to education. The problem was, black children did not have the same opportunities. So Marshall decided to fight through the courts. He joined the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People as a lawyer in 1936. Working for over 20 years, he won a staggering 29 cases before the Supreme Court. But one of his greatest victories was the landmark case Brown versus the Board of Education, where the court agreed with his argument that separate educational facilities for students was inherently unequal and schools should be fully integrated. In 1967, President Lyndon B. Johnson nominated him to the Supreme Court, making Marshall the first black person to serve on the highest court in the land. There, he continued to protect the rights of Americans until his retirement in 1991. How do you think early influences on Thurgood Marshall's life helped propel him on a course to fulfill the promise of the U.S. Constitution? 